All right, so yeah, thanks again for calling. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, you have your copy, you said, right? <laughs> so, I do. Yeah, guys, here I have Holly with me, and uh, her name is right down there. If you can see it, Holly, um, she helped me write the last book, The Pilot Factored, and um, she was instrumental in making this what it is now. Um, so Holly, why don't you tell me a little bit about your story? Because I think this is what kind of drew me to, uh, asking for your help in the first place. Um, you're pretty inspiring in the work that you do and like what you've accomplished and what you're helping people do around you. So, um, your Instagram handle is flying fit. What's the story behind that? So basically it's been like a long process between learning to fly and getting a career established in flying. Also, having a period of time in the aviation industry that was slow and there wasn't a lot of work for a brand new pilot. So I went to, you know, something else that I was passionate about. And at the time it was fitness and I found myself getting into fitness competition and getting my personal training license and working with people, starting my own business, um, having my own home gym with clients. And also at the same time, working on my aviation career. So for today, I am now a full-time pilot and still competing, um, not in fitness competitions, but I've actually moved into a whole different realm of being an athlete in uh, equestrian. I do horse competitions now. Wow. Uh, same, same principles, same health, same regimens, same workouts. Um, tailored to being an equestrian rider instead of obviously a bikini model though but a lot of the principles that we talk about in this book still apply that's awesome um so obviously you're pretty driven i would say and everything that you do like i mean you're always like pursuing some pretty high drive things um what uh i mean what got you in the first place into fitness to begin with you know, I just found myself in a position where I wanted to better myself. You know, I was young, so I was skinny, but I wasn't, let's say, fit. Yeah. <laughs> so just just small, but with no muscle tone, no athletic, you know, let's say, not necessarily less athletic ability, but just endurance, right? Um, I always did competitions growing up, and I was in ballroom dancing and a whole other slew of random things um and when I got into my 20s I was like you know what? I need something for me yeah. and fitness was the thing that I could do on my own um without you know a team or coaches or anything like that so yeah. I started on that journey and then once I found fitness modeling because I'm like oh great now I can incorporate this new passion for fitness but take it to a competitive level which is what always has drove me to yeah. better myself as had a need for competition right so um switching into that mode got myself coach got myself a nutritionist got myself licensed learned took a bunch of classes courses and just you know try to learn as much as possible so i can do it effectively and also safely yeah oh, safely is a, it's a big thing especially <laughs> I'm, I'm realizing i just went to the masseuse and i came back and i was like so sore <laughs> uh, i'm realizing that like i was telling her I, I probably sound like a wimp and i'm like you know i gotta be careful no. like <laughs> the last thing i want to do is it's, like pull my muscle or <laughs> well it's so true everybody especially right now in this time of year because you know it's new year's resolutions and everybody's like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna hit it hard yeah and they do they, they over push and they, you end up being you know prone to injury because of this and yeah. people need to understand it's like it's a gradual process and <laughs> yeah. it's not up <laughs> yeah yeah you can't go from totally. like you know nothing couch potato to like the model that, or the coach you know physique that's teaching you yeah right and you know <laughs> Of course, with social media and everything else, you see these beautiful bodies and you're like, oh, I want that. But they don't understand that the years that it took to get them to that yeah. level and the training and the discipline, the food, you know, they think, well, if I just yeah. work out a whole bunch and don't eat a lot, I'm going to look like that. Yeah. You know, that's not realistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, and working with you, I've discovered that it's quite a science just uh, to go from, you know, being healthy, I guess, in general, that's one right. thing. But uh, pursuing this sort of like edge um, is quite a bit 
more involved than just saying like, like yeah, like you said, oh, I'm going to eat less, you know, or I'm just going to work out harder. You got to be smart about it, I guess, and, and plan it a lot more. <laughs> um, oh, that's really cool. So now you kept that. How did that help you as you transition from, you know, that modeling and fitness career? Um, then you got into uh, flight attendant and then you transitioned into the cockpit. That's uh, for, first of all, yeah. that's really cool that you made that switch. Um, and what brought you to make the switch? And then I guess it's a two part question. Um, yeah. Once you did or even as you were a flight attendant, like how did you find that health discipline, that fitness discipline? How did you find it affect your your work? Because you travel. I mean, you're like me. You fly long range. Um, so we're, mm -hmm. you know, subject to time zones and having to manage, you know, calorie intake on the road or like in the plane even um, to manage our energy levels and everything. So how did you find, did you find that helped you a lot or? Well, I'll be completely honest. The first year I was, we'll, we'll go back and forth, but the first yeah. year I was a planet, um, I definitely gained weight because... Uh, anybody that flies corporate knows that there's this wonderful thing called a snack basket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's full of, like, everything that you could possibly want, all the goodies that, you know, your heart can, te can yeah. take, right? So uh, the first year, you're like, oh, everything's here. It's so great. It's wonderful. And it's easy to get. Um, well, that can get out of control. So before you learn how to tailor that, and then you just kind of, like, blindly pass the snack basket, yeah. it, it it was very tempting. Um, but, it, you know, it took control. And being that I had all this health uh, knowledge, obviously I knew that was not a great idea. But yeah. I could take my information and started packing my own food or going to the grocery store and, you know, prepping meals for, you know, one or two days. I can't really do a week like you could at home yeah. on the road because of, you know, storage and space and you have to carry everything. So, you know, start doing that. Um being a pilot, as you know, is long hours, oh, red eyes, uh, fatigue is real. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and being able to manage your food intake to make sure you're not going to just be consuming a bunch of empty calories or excessive calories um, before you go and sit down for 13 hours and have, you know, no way to burn any of those off. Also, maintain especially, no hydration levels sleep everything else is it all comes into play and it's a balance of all of those things yeah. to be efficient and effective at your job the last thing we want is to have a pilot that's sleep deprived under yeah. you know no nutrition hasn't worked out in weeks is high blood pressure and everything else at the in the cockpit right yeah so taking everything that i learned from my fitness career really helped me become more of a efficient human mm -hmm. in my job as a pilot yeah that makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense um what do you find has helped you the most so like you work out um you plan your meals being on the road like for you what's the most crucial thing to manage if you had like to pick one let's say and you said like if anything else like i want to be able to control that that makes the most difference in my life for me i know it might seem small to some people but hydration yeah. I find it very difficult to maintain that and it gets away from me. And then I'll find myself like shriveled up in two days after yeah. flying nonstop, you know, and you're like, oh, wow, like you, you're, you're bloated, your, yeah. your face is sunk, your skin feels terrible. It's just because you're sitting up in the cockpit for so long and you just don't necessarily think about it. You have to actually make a note like, okay. I'm going to yeah. grab three water bottles with me. I'm going to take them to the cockpit for this flight. And before I land, I am going to finish all three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I have to do things like that to keep myself in check. Otherwise, it just gets away from me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, like, I, we're super lucky. So I used to fly uh, the uh, Cessna Citation before the Global. And um, I've been back on that plane a couple of times and just realizing, like, I... I I, it's sort of like a blocked memory, I guess. It's like, you know, bad memories that you block. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I mean, flying the plane was a lot of fun and it brought me a lot of experience. But, like, I just going back to that plane, realizing how small it is and, like, the lab is all the way at the back and mm -hmm. you can barely sit on it. And I remember those times where <laughs> I had to, like, be super careful. We might have had, like, a four-hour flight to do, 
but how much water or coffee was I willing? It was always a trade off. Like, how much coffee do I? How many times do you want to go to the back? <laughs> yeah, like you know. Uh, so it's a trade off of like how awake versus how uh, how awake do I want to be versus like how much like do I have to pee kind of thing. Uh, so now with <laughs> so the global, <laughs> yeah, we have the lab like right behind the cockpit, which is like amazing to me. So most oh, of the time, I end up yeah. drinking way more water. Like I'll show up and I'll dump like five bottles of water on my seat and uh <laughs> and um but yeah it's a great thing because you can just like drink as much as you want and um probably drink too much coffee because of that too but <laughs> um, then you're like hydrating to dehydrate <laughs> yeah well you know you're maintaining the balance right now <laughs> yeah exactly. um so yeah absolutely hydration i think is a big big thing and it makes a huge difference like i find on the road um in the flight, it's not so bad if it's not too long. But as you said, it compounds kind of thing. And on the road, if you mm -hmm. don't manage it over time, it gets really bad. Um, I find especially sleeping in hotels where the air is always so dry. You're always at different altitudes, yeah. you know. Um, mm -hmm. And this is when, like, my sleep gets really wrecked. I know on the long haul flight, if I haven't hydrated well, like, it's it's night and day. Literally, like, I mean, it's it's night and day difference, so. I feel like a lot of people don't understand like how much it affects other things in your life. Yeah. It's not just hydration. Like it, it is your sleep. It is your nutrition level, your food, you know, um, your skin, like everything. Yeah. And like you said, it compiles. And if you let it go a couple of days, it just gets really bad. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember, so there's like one of the chapter or, or sub headers in the book, uh, which you helped me write that says, why am I not dead yet? Uh, in the hydration <laughs> level, in the, in the hydration chapter. And I love it because it's such a good, like, question. A lot of people would ask that. They're like, well, I just drink coffee, you know, all day. And and I don't care about water. Like, I'm not dead. I'm doing fine, obviously. <laughs> um, but like you said, people don't realize just how fine the balance is. And, yeah, it's good mm -hmm. that we can get a lot of hydration from things that we eat. Because I think that was one of the, the answers, right, that you gave in the book. Like, do you want to expand right. on that? Mm -hmm. Well, it, yeah, obviously, if you're eating le leafy green salads, you're consuming water or fruit or other water-dense products versus, you know, just your hamburgers and your sandwiches and stuff like that. Those aren't water-dense yeah. nutrition. So, no, you can't get all your water from your food, but it is supplementing what you know, you're eating versus drinking. So yeah, yeah. I still recommend, even if you're, you know, vegetarian and only eating your salads, like you still intake as much water as you can. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you tell the non-believers why coffee doesn't count as hydration? <laughs> well, the caffeine actually dehydrates you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, even though it is water, it's the properties within caffeine is dehydrating you. So, you know, have your cup of uh coffee in the morning and then yeah. make sure you're following it up with a bottle of water after yeah. or vice versa yeah. whatever you can stand well honestly you know the rule in in the book that you wrote and i don't know if i can find it here but um even my five-year-old knows it honestly he uh he will come to me and he will say i peed clear today so i'm well hydrated <laughs> i'm like yep <laughs> Perfect. Five-year-old <laughs> five is self-regulated. He knows how to stay hydrated. I'm like, you can't get any simpler than that. So if a five-year-old can do it, I'm sure that we can all do that. Yeah. Um, That's so funny. Well, <laughs> it was pop food. Yeah, exactly, right? P-O-P-C, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yep. So as long as... That's a, it's a good indicator. Obviously, it's not the only thing, but it is a very good indicator, yeah. obviously. As your five-year-old says, hey, my yeah. pee's clear, that means I am. Uh, properly hydrated <laughs> yeah yeah so there you go so i mean i, I guess in, in a sense like you sort of uh, like to to check in and be aware and like uh, be cognizant of these Absolutely. things yourself so like, some people just don't care don't they don't pay attention uh but if you start noticing these little things it goes a long way towards managing things a lot easier right because you don't have to do anything fancy mm -hmm. or so that's pretty cool um I, I feel like a lot of times you don't notice the decline as much yeah because it just kind of creeps up on you but as soon as you have a couple good days you're like wow you know yeah. things don't hurt much i'm awake like i feel good yeah and 
you know, it's getting yourself to go, you know what, I need to switch back to being more cognizant of what I'm doing and what I'm putting in my body. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that uh, for our job, the, you know, I don't know, you can you tell me if you think that's right. But I find that for me, the hardest part isn't flying the plane, like long haul flying. The challenge is in managing myself uh, throughout the flight. So I find like short haul flying might be different. Um, but long haul flight, especially like long trips on the road where you're going through multiple countries and time zones and your flights are, you know, nine, 10 hours, like you go from the West Coast all the way to Europe, like they've got to be long flights. And knowing myself enough to have and having the discipline, so that before the flight, and after the flight, um, I know what I need in terms of rest, I know what I need in terms of food, um, in terms of exercise. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, having the discipline to carry through with those things, but also knowing yourself enough to know like when not to push too hard. You know, like some days I know that driven like type A's like us, we get to the other side. We're like, all right, we're going to stick to our workout routine. We're going to do this <laughs> and that. And, you know, some days you just have to be like, no, today is like a rest Sleep. day. Sleep. Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you need it, you know, and if you don't take that, mm -hmm. then you're going to go through the rest of that week. Let's say going through Europe, like just dead, you know, so uh, that's the biggest challenge for me. Like, I don't know if you find the same the same thing to be true for you, but. Actually, great example. My last rotation, there was six days that I did seven transcontinental flights. Oh. So L.A. <laughs> York, six days and did seven. That is gruesome. <laughs> so I know what you're talking about. And literally, I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I need to work out because I'm sitting all day every yeah. day for the next like week um i need to also sleep yeah <laughs> and i also need to go and get food so i was like all right one two what? or three or three, two <laughs> yeah. one like where do i you know where am i placing these today and yeah. that's at some point where like some days were just a nice 20 minute workout some days i'm like nope i'm gonna get an extra hour of sleep to yeah. on when the next flight was yeah. and it's just knowing your schedule knowing your body and prioritizing things yeah. like okay it's really going and hanging out in the lobby chit-chatting for two hours yeah. versus that extra nap and maybe like a 30 minute walk around the, you know the complex that you're at and yeah. then you know getting food versus okay i'm gonna take 15 20 minutes extra to go to the grocery store and get something good yeah. for myself or should i just go and get fast food next door because it's quick and easy yeah. you know so it's always making these choices every day <laughs> the <laughs> tough like, choices uh... that we have to make pastry or pizza today i mean i'm in italy self-control is real you I have know. To, like... <laughs> so it's funny because um a year ago and i mean you talk about you talked about getting into aviation and and not realizing just how terrible it can be to fall into a lot of those like pit like, like those those traps those pitfalls that are, that are there yeah like you know the snag basket and stuff and um i i thought for the longest time that i was i don't a healthy weight and maybe i was blind to it um or i kept saying <laughs> yeah. like well i carry it well i don't know uh <laughs> and uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it came a point where um I I don't believe in diets. So I'm going to preface with that. I typically don't believe in diets. And whenever somebody tells me about one, like I'm, I, I'll be the first one to roll my eyes and be like, come on, you know, uh, just work harder. Uh, you know, hard, Arnold Schwarzenegger type. Uh, but yeah, it, it was realizing that, you know, you can't out eat. Uh, you can't out train a bad diet. Sorry. Um, and so sure. it took a lot of restructuring of my mind and my understanding of that, um, and thankfully through the work that we did together, that opened my eyes a lot to what it meant to really eat healthy. Because I, I always said like, well, you know, as long as it's balanced, right? Like you know, as long as you have enough veggies or whatever, or you don't, if you eat a lot now, you might not have to, you know, don't eat too much later or whatever. But there's actually, you know, if you want to put a little work into it, if you want real, uh, if you want real benefits, there's, there's a little bit of science that goes into it and mm. nothing hair pulling you know it doesn't have to be anything too fancy <laughs> or too crazy because a lot of people will be like what what macro what um but i realized what? yeah okay um 
And so I did uh, for a month and a half. I think it was a two month and a half. I did. I went through keto and I lost way more weight. Than I thought was possible. I was like, I remember seeing your pictures. So like, well, where'd yeah, you go? right. <laughs> and I just couldn't believe that. I mean, because seeing the after, and I lost, I think it was thirty pounds. And as seeing the after, I was like, I couldn't believe that I could put like put off so much weight. And I was like, whoa, I guess I was overweight. Like, we're worth that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So it was really eye opening to see the difference and like and how I feel, how I sleep, um, and being on the road, just the work too, um, and it's really given me a good basis and an understanding of what you know truly eating well means and what a healthy lifestyle means. It's not it, yes, it is about balance. Like I used to say that all the time, but it's about more than that. Um, so having done that. And working with you, learning about how to balance food and macronutrients, how sleep and eating and fitness all have sort of, you mentioned that sort of a hierarchy. You have to, you know, understand how they interrelate and how they work together. Um, so that was really eye opening. Right. We as pilots don't have the luxury of prepping our meals for a week. We work you know, nine to five and at five thirty we go to the gym, you know, yeah. we don't get that kind of structure. So we really have to do, you know, the best job we can with what we're, we're given, right? Some yeah. weeks are crazy and it's nonstop. Some weeks we have, you know, all the time in the world to do whatever we want with yeah. that. But it, you know, it's always up and down. It's <laughs> you never know what you're going to get yeah. every week. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. I think, and like you said, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, like you said, it's like you need this balance, but and that will get you, you know, to a point. But if you want to get past that point, then that's where, you know, science and actually getting into it a little bit more and tracking and, you know, all of the fun things that we talk about in the book yeah. come into play. Yeah, yeah. I guess we shouldn't give up all the secrets, have people buy the book. No. <laughs> <laughs> being on the road what i what i find the most honestly is like you said yeah it's knowing sort of the balance knowing just enough i guess because you don't need to uh you don't need to be into fitness like you said you don't need to be like a health yeah. nut um yep. if you like met let's say that tomorrow you have a new flight crew and they don't know you or what you're about and um you know they won't they, they start ask, asking question uh what would be like your basic uh, tip or your introduction to the subject to them like if you said well you know uh, try this out uh, this simple thing and go from there what would it be for a flight crew I would say okay guys uh, instead of going out to dinner let's go and grab food from the grocery store and make it because the amount of calories that you consume like empty basic calories from going out to restaurants is so high yeah. and you can't control what they put in you don't know how much butter and salt and everything although it tastes great you have no control over it so sure. the biggest tip is purchase your own food put things together yourself because then you have full control of what you're consuming True. and i would try to get my flight crew to go with me to the grocery store and do this grocery store run and also to have those as our crew meals and plan those things out for the next couple of flights yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense um, do you find that uh, flight attendants typically are easy to work with that way? Like if you go to them and you say like, hey, can we work on this? Like, do you find that they get on board pretty quickly with that? Absolutely. Most of our flight attendants, I know every company is different, um, go to the grocery store and buy crew meals. So um, I can just pretty much give them like, oh, hey, can you just grab this salad or this, this, and this? And they'll get it for me. Yeah. Um, either that or... If I don't want to bother them, where, you know, a lot of times they don't have time, I'll just go and get it myself. And here's my little baggie. Do you mind, you know, yeah. making that for me for lunch? And everybody's super great. If you tell somebody that you're trying to eat a little healthier and you're watching what you're eating, I would say 95% of the time people are going to be on board and supportive. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah that's true. And I, I, yeah, Go ahead. You don't get a put. I was going to say, I've never gotten any pushback on um 
doing that. So. On doing that, yeah. And it's great. I mean, I think that uh, most of the time, too, you might be able to sort of influence them in a positive way, you know? I think a lot of people yeah. will see that and it sort of motivates them to be like, oh, okay, you know, I'll try it with, you know, I'll try it with you. Like, I've seen flight crews do that with me. Would they be like, wow, oh, I'll try that, you know, while you're doing it? Uh, or, you know, if you say, I'll go for a walk and typically, like, they follow. I mean, I love, like, Europe Absolutely. and stuff like that for that because, like, you put in so many steps in a day, you don't even think about it, right? And, right uh, so it offsets that croissant that you yeah. ate for breakfast yeah. right <laughs> although the one so when i did keto it was terrible because we went we kept going to europe and uh my oh, flight crew, i don't i think they did it on purpose but i remember being like in in uh what was it in poland and we went to this place mm -hmm. that had the most amazing looking and smelling pierogies how they tasted, I can't tell you because I couldn't have them. But they had, like these plates full of good food. I was like, no. But you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it helped because honestly, now it's great. I can go to Europe and most of the time, like the most, I'll do window shopping. I'd, like I look at all the beautiful pastries and, you know, I'll admire them from a distance. And then I'm like, all right, that's good. <laughs> That's one thing we do talk about in the book is sugar and yeah. that it takes, you know, 72 hours to check a sugar craving. Yeah. So if you continue to feed it, even if it's a little bit every day, you're going to continue to crave the sugar, yeah. right? So as soon as you break that and you've gone several days and it's out of your system and your brain's no longer craving it, yeah. you can walk past a bakery or, you know, candy on, at the grocery yeah. store and it's just kind of, it's not there. It's not staring at you going yeah. hi me <laughs> you know yeah you have to break the addiction <laughs> go to rehab which is hard because most people just kind of continue to feel it right even yeah. little bits at a time and then when you do see those things you're like oh oh yes you know and yeah. it's not you it's your brain saying like we need the yeah, sugar yeah, give it to me now <laughs> yeah. do you want me to work um yeah. what do you find like uh, you know, uh, learning to read a label, for example, and that that's in the book, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, I found going through that and going through keto, like you had to read all the labels like so carefully. And no, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, but it was like learning to see what's there, what's hidden and like the places where I would never have expected, you know, sugar to be or carbs and and um now that's opened my eyes to a lot of, of traps that, you know, you talk about the snack basket on the plane, but like <laughs> those those energy bars that come by, you know, and they're like uh, some people just eat them like it, it's candy. Yeah, it's, it's healthy, right? It's a protein bar. But I'm like, no, it's Bye, mostly a it's sugar cool. bar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Labeled as a fitness. Yeah. Bar. Yeah. Well, I think the, the biggest sneaker, I guess, that you could say is serving size. Oh, so yeah. you pick up something real quick and it says, oh, 160 calories. You're like, oh, that's nothing. It's fine. Yeah. But it's like for three servings. So this yeah. one little bar <laughs> yeah. is actually, you know, three servings. Yeah. So now it's not 160 calories. It's 160 calories. He bite. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> 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 then you're like whoa yeah they really get away from you oh man yeah that's when the people will see me pick up something and they'll be like throw it away because i'm like <laughs> <laughs> i can't <laughs> it's either do you have the willpower to only take one bite or right? not <laughs> <laughs> so i might as well not open that's it that's not gonna happen <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I, you know, I used to, it's funny because I used to, the flight attendants, when I got on the global, like they would look at me, they would make such good food and they would look at me with huge eyes. Like it would be like, you can eat so much food. And I, I never thought too much of it. <laughs> and then now I look back and I'm like, oh man, yeah, I was piling away way too I much. I really food. ate a lot of food. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> way too much food. <laughs> So, yeah. well, and that's, that's something to consider is your crew meals. It's like, it's a big deal. Do you really need. You need to curve it. Like if you're going to be sitting on a long flight, like having a big bowl of pasta or, or you know, something super calorie dense is not a good option. Yeah. I mean, it's literally just going to sit with you for that entire flight. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, carbs and you're going to have a, a crash afterwards yeah. and you're going to get a sleepy. So eating things that are going to maintain your sugar level is also going to maintain your cognitive level, yeah. right? In the cockpit, you're not going to have these like, woes throughout yeah. the flight yeah 
Do you have a favorite go-to sort of thing in the cockpit that you can grab or that you can make yourself that sort of helps you maintain yeah, that? Yeah, you know, I, actually my like new thing lately is uh, the pre-packaged salads at the grocery store. Yeah. They're like anywhere between three and five dollars. Yeah. It's great. I can just hand that over to the flight attendant. It has, you know, everything in there. I'm like, I just want this. Yeah. And nobody complains. It's all there for them. And it's easy to put my, you know, in my bag. And nothing's going to spill or yeah, break. Yeah, that's true. Right? So I would say right now, that's kind of where I'm going to. That and yogurt. Oh, man. That's easy. So. <laughs> we go through so <laughs> yeah, much yogurt in this house. Like, I'm probably, <laughs> like, three or four tubs of, like, Greek yogurt. Like, it's, like, our go-to for everything. The fresh berries. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and, hey, you can replace, like, so many things with yogurt. Like, oh, man, I could list. Like, I just, yeah all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah just watch the sugars in them because a lot of them add their own flavors and right. all that sugar is, is like literally sugar syrup yeah flavored, like strawberry that's true yeah <laughs> no we buy like it's called triple zero usually but it's like zero sugar added mm -hmm. zero fat and zero yep. something else no i can't remember i do the same thing <laughs> anyway. i just add like blueberries and like mush them up and make yeah. my own <laughs> oh yeah exactly uh one of my favorite is powdered peanut butter powdered peanut butter so yeah. it, like with no sugar added so there's barely any fat mm -hmm. and you get like your peanut butter taste and uh, that's great and it's, okay. it's crazy like something like that um people don't realize i think they're just getting peanuts if you actually go it goes back to reading the nutrition yeah oh man <laughs> you'll see it. there's yeah. like sugar and palm oil and everything yeah. else and i'm like what happened to peanuts you yeah know? <laughs> yeah or that bag of trail mix i've seen people sit down you know and like down half a bag and i'm like they're like you want some i'm like thank you <laughs> it's all like sugared fruit and stuff well, and but like even just like it, you know until you turn it around and you read the label and realize that like a quarter cup of that mix is your you know yeah. a quarter of your calories for the day and you're like oh, you know <laughs> <laughs> take it down better have a meal <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like that whole bag of salad or this much trail mix yeah exactly <laughs> yeah oh, that's awesome um you know i wish that we could bring this sort of stuff like sleep i think that the faa transport canada and like people around the world now is starting to bring sleep uh into safety uh you know crm was a big okay. thing and now like they're bringing sleep and rest new rules for that but it's great because i think it's the foundation right of a healthy lifestyle uh, without a good sleep but they're not teaching people to have a good sleep or anything either i think they're just saying got to make sure you got enough sleep <laughs> Yeah. Well, I feel like, so I work for a 135 operator and a lot of times, you know, the lines are, let's say blurry because yes, they are giving you the legal amount of rest and time off. Right. But that, that doesn't mean that you can literally go to your hotel room, shower, change and go right to bed. Right. Yeah. And get your eight hours and get up and be back at the airport. Yeah. I would say most of us have to go, you know, wind down. You're already like mentally awake right yeah. so it's going to take a while so you're not necessarily getting the sleep that you need if you have back-to-back -back trips because just because you have 10 hours off does not mean that you actually were able to wind down and sleep yeah you know so then you're deducting okay well i only got six hours this day and then the yeah. next day i got five and a half and the next day well i got seven but that deficiency will follow you through the week mm -hmm. and then you're just getting further and further behind as we go right yeah. so then by flight number five you're like well you had adequate time off well yes <laughs> yeah but did you actually get sleep or were able yeah. to get sleep during that time off yeah. right oh that's when like um, the question that we get often or like our owners or our clients will be like so you know you guys had all this time off like why how why are you so <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> <laughs> it's not how it works <laughs> um, no and especially when you go to europe you know it's like you you land we all know how this works it's like okay depending on the time of day that you landed do yeah. you go sleep and then know you're going to be up all night yeah. <laughs> or do you just power through and stay awake and just kind of like you know yeah. hit the ground running so that you can sleep through the night yeah. you know and, these are things that you have to take into consideration yeah, absolutely you know plan your sleep <laughs> yeah and like i mean like we said like i feel like there's a lot there's a big discipline aspect that comes into there because 
I've seen a lot of flight crews do that. They, you know, we get to the hotel and everybody goes for a nap, you know, because we land, let's say, on the typical. For those who aren't used to that, a typical mm -hmm. transcontinental will land, will leave here at night, here being North America, to land in Europe. Typically in the morning, we get there in the middle of the morning, uh, 10, 11 a.m. By the time you've put the plane away, you've done customs and everything, you get to the hotel, it's 1 or 2 p.m. Um, then you have a choice, like, you know, like you said, you can either wait until dinner or, you know, bedtime, or we can take a nap. And the worst thing that I've seen people do is say, okay, I'm just going to go take a nap. I'll meet you for dinner. And comes 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., you're texting them. You're like, okay, hey, you know, are you ready to go? Well. And they've just... Yeah. They've just snoozed the alarm enough that now they're sleeping through the night and they wake up at two, three in the morning. And now it's, you know, you, right. you, you might as well throw the cards because uh, you're done for a couple of days that way. So it takes a lot of discipline. You set your alarm. You say, I just need a couple of hours. Yeah. And sleep. if you think you're only going to sleep 30 minutes, like you're, you're kidding yourself. Oh, yeah. It's the sleep of the dead that is like so deep. Oh, Absolutely. Man. So if you met your old self uh, or your, yeah, your young self, you know, and you said, oh, young Ali, like if only you knew, uh, here's one thing, you know, that will change your life. Or if you met like, you know, I don't know, new flight crew comes onto the, the G4, G5 global that you're flying uh, from a smaller plane and isn't used to these long haul type things or even just, you know, health in general, what would you tell them like as a life uh life hack in regards to like long haul flights or just in general uh let's say just in general like something that you find is good to know some life wisdom i think kind of what we just talked about is plan plan ahead if you are ahead of the game you're not going to get behind right have your foods ready know when you need to sleep know when i can fit in a workout and make sure you prioritize yourself first before everyone else because mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to get wrapped up in oh well we'll just go out we'll just do this and then you know you don't get your workout in yeah. you don't get the sleep you need in you drink too many glasses of wine and yeah. had a heavy dinner and then you didn't sleep well right so yeah. putting yourself a priority first and foremost because it's so easy especially when you get into this and if you're one of those lucky people that get to travel and go to like amazing places to put that first, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, hit the ground running and then completely neglect yourself. And then by the time you get home from your rotation, you're like, oh, yeah. you know, my God, I'm <laughs> overweight and, <laughs> you know, I am exhausted and yeah. I feel terrible because all I did was everything else but me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's easy, right, to get there and to party and to sort of fall into the trap of like... Yeah, it's it's a fun it's a fun job, but like you said, it takes discipline and planning. Yeah, yeah, and I think mm -hmm. you know, like you said, if you plan, a lot of people will be like, "Well, I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer or like a slam clicker, you know, and be that guy in the okay. crew." But I feel like there's a place to, you can do both, and eventually, I've it's seen. Hey. Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go run to the gym for thirty, and then then yeah. yeah, let's hit the streets and go out. You know what I mean? You don't have to close your doors and say. I'm not eating anything bad and I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not doing anything. I'm going to go to bed exactly at this time. You know, yeah. you don't, that, it's not that. We're not asking people to be, like you said, slam clickers. Yeah. We're just asking people to prioritize themselves and their health and their fitness yeah. first and then everything else. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, uh, for calling in. Thanks for helping me with the book too. That, that was really fun. This book. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, Holly. And safe flying. You've been flying a lot despite everything. So it's good to hear and stay safe.